Hi, this is Ryan Brown from mockquestions.com. In this video, we'll discuss five test engineer interview questions from our website. We'll go over each question and some advice on how to answer them, along with an answer example. Afterwards, if you found this video helpful, please like and share. That would mean a lot to us. Okay, let's get started. Question number one, please describe the job responsibilities of a test engineer. Interviewers will ask this question early in the interview to begin the conversation, learn more about your background, and collect information they can use throughout the interview. By asking you to describe the responsibilities for this job, they learn about your understanding of the position and whether it aligns with theirs. You can easily answer this question appropriately by reviewing the job posting and researching the organization to learn more about its operations. The key job responsibilities of a test engineer involve testing a product to ensure that it functions properly and performs as specified. I accomplish this by designing effective test environments, plans, and use cases. I also work closely with the product development team to understand the use case scenario for the product and provide them with feedback, which will help improve both the usability and the serviceability of the product. Question number two, have you ever experienced a software developer disagreeing with your test results? How did you manage this? This is a behavioral question that presents you with a scenario and then asks you how you would respond. You can structure your answer to a behavioral question using the star format. Describe the situation, define the task you had to complete, talk about the actions you took, and then discuss the results you achieved. While it's unusual, I sometimes do disagree with members of the software development team about my testing strategies and the results they achieve. When this occurs, I focus on reaching a consensus to ensure that my testing will be valid and help the development team improve their products and processes. I listen to the team's concerns and then recommend ways to modify the testing procedures to achieve the desired results without compromising the quality of the products. We negotiate until we've reached an agreement, which usually results in a valid test strategy that contributes to the overall quality of the end product produced by the software team. Question number three, how would you proceed with a software test if proper documentation was not available? This question is a bit tricky because you can respond to it in two different ways. The first is to describe how you would proceed with the testing even though the proper documentation was unavailable. This may involve turning to your previous experience, seeking documentation similar to what you would expect for the product, or simply making your best effort despite the lack of documentation. You could also respond by saying that you would not proceed with the software testing and would instead seek to obtain the documentation necessary for the testing. Most employers prefer the second option since they try to maintain standard procedures and are sometimes governed by rules and regulations requiring them to produce documentation upon request. There have been several occasions when I was presented with a piece of software to test without the appropriate documentation. In each case, I elected to postpone the testing so I could obtain the necessary documentation. This would enable me to perform the test properly, obtain the desired results, and remain compliant with the organization's processes and procedures and any industry or government regulations and requirements. The small delay in testing is preferred to the additional time required to repeat a faulty test or respond to regulatory actions. Question number four. Tell me about a time when you collaborate with a team of developers to successfully launch a new application. There was a time when the quality assurance process and the work done by test engineers conflicted with the goals of the software development team. It resulted in identifying errors and bugs in the software at the end of the development process, which caused more work for the development team. However, the new paradigm is that the software development team and the test engineering team are partners and need to collaborate to develop processes that result in high quality products with little to no rework or bug fixes. Processes like Agile, Lean, and Waterfall identify critical issues at each stage of the process before they have a larger impact later on. You should have several examples of when you collaborated with the development team to launch a new application. In every one of my jobs, I've worked closely with the software development team to successfully launch new products. I recently collaborated with the team to develop an HR application that allowed employees to self-manage their benefits packages. The team and I met early in the process to define the requirements, discuss the application's features, uncover any challenges, 
and set up a test plan that would help the developers be more accurate and finish the job quickly. Because of this planning, the project went smoothly and we launched the application two weeks ahead of schedule with no bugs in the final product. Question number five, what soft skills do you believe are important for a test engineer to possess? It should be obvious that test engineers need certain technical skills to perform this job effectively. However, there's also a portfolio of soft skills required to be effective in this role. Knowing these and describing them to the interviewer will validate your qualifications and persuade them to consider you as a serious candidate for the job. There are several soft skills I possess that allow me to be successful in the role of a test engineer. These include my analytical skills and attention to detail, my ability to collaborate with other teams from across the organization, my focus on deadlines and ability to work under pressure to meet them, and how effectively I communicate complex technical topics to audiences with both a strong technical or no technical background. Thank you for watching. If you found this video helpful, it'd be greatly appreciated if you could subscribe to our channel. It really does help motivate us to continue creating videos. Thanks again, and we hope you stick around to watch more interview practice videos from Mock Questions.